Okay, I thought I'd quickly show you how to do the folders uh, import. So here we have um, a folder uh, called Crime4. Uh, so we go into that. We've then got two subfolders, uh, one for 09 and one for 10. So if we go into 09, you'll see that I've got a few CSV files in there. And if we go back and look in 10, you'll see I've got another load of CSV files in there. And if we go over to Power BI uh, Desktop and click Get Data, we can then go down to Folder here, click Folder, click Connect. Uh, we can then browse to that folder. Um, so it will be in here, in here. In here, Crime 4, and then we could choose one of those subfolders if we wanted to just port, import the contents of that folder. Um, but we can also do um, the the hierarchy of folders too. Uh, so if we choose that one there uh, and pick like that, we can click OK. What that will do is bring in just a preview of the file names, extension, file access. This is just the metadata about that, that file. So we click Edit. And we come into here. And then at this point, we can actually click these two down arrows um, like that. And that's going to open up all of those CSV files all throughout the subfolders as well. Um, and then, like I said on the phone, we just need to go and uh, exclude the reported by. So I've just chosen it on that one because I know that one's got less uh, unique values. So it's going to take less time to do this load through. If I'd done it on Crime ID, it would take a bit longer because there's an individual Crime ID for every single row. Whereas there's lots of, uh, lots of rows per uh, reported by. This is crime data, um, people being stopped um, uh, from data.police.gov uh, so we just click OK that should filter out that um, you'll see it's automatically up here this data type it's going to automatically pick up most of these uh, columns but worth just going through and checking um, that it's got it right the uh, italicized um, date means that it's picked up the date there it's correctly recognized that as a date uh, you can go and add you know stuff in like this we can go add column click on date over here, go year, and then add a year column. That's going to go and just add a column for year. You can go and do that for month, week, day, whatever, um, as well, if you like. Um, then we can go over here We can call this, uh, just call it crime. Um, go over to close and apply. We can click close and apply. That's going to then actually create the query and go and import all of that data. So all of those different CSV files um, through the folder hierarchy and import that in and you'll see over here we've now got that uh, that data so we can say crime type by this and we can change that to a count and change that to a bar chart and do sort by count the crime ID like that. Okay, then I'll arrange that nicely on the page. Um, and in fact, we might prefer a different visualization. So we can go to uh, a website visuals.powerbi.com. Um, I've already downloaded all of them. So we can go in here and we can go pick a, uh, a custom visual, import that straight away, and then we've got it over here to use. And we can go and change that to a custom visual. Uh, we can then uh, we can then actually go and grab uh, some more data as well. So in this case, this is crime data. Um, so what we can actually do and go and do is go and grab the um, lookup file, which is a CSV file. Which again, you can download off the government website. I'm sure you're very aware of lookup files. This just translates that LSOA code um, into more understandable um, regions. So here, this is pulled in that CSV file. We can go click this up here and change use first row as headers. So that will move everything up into the um, column headers. Then we can choose to keep the this one uh, and this one. We can remove other columns like that. 
uh, you can go rename this to LSOA code and rename this to local authority like that. Uh, and then because this is a reference table you've got a nice little button up here which is much easier than, than it used to be. Let's just click that to so remove duplicates in that LSOA code um, column and then we can go change the name to location like that. Click enter and then again click apply and close. Uh, we can then go to this little tab over here expand that down and then we can create a relationship between the LSOA code and LSOA code like that by literally dragging and dropping uh, that across and then you can see this one here denotes a uh, one, two, many, star being many uh, on this side. So we've got our reference table um, linked to our, our main table. Um, so then we can go back and we can now use local authority um, to slice that, slice that data. Just expand this out so it's more legible. Uh, we can then change that to a filter and we can go click into any of the. And if I was connected to the internet, we could simply, I'll show you anyway, it, it's not going to work, um, but I will show you show you anyway if we click, click off there. We can click in a map. Um, if I was connected to the internet, this would work. So. Bear with me, it's not actually going to populate, but you'd pull in longitude, latitude, put the legend as crime type, um, and uh, we could pull in crime ID down here, like that. Uh, and that's automatically going to do count of crime ID, uh, and that would, would show as a map if, uh, if it was a map. Um, what we can do over here as well, that's probably worth um, just showing you, is we change this back to a bar chart, we've got this colour saturation down here. So we can actually pull Crime ID down there, and you'll see it will saturate it. We can then go over to the formatting, and we can do data colours like that. Change the minimum to green, uh, the centre one to yellow, and the maximum to red, like that. And you'll see we've colour coded that um, automatically as well. We'll just change that to that, just so we can see what we're doing with it. Take out, take out those. Data for Barbe, so Barnet. There you go. You should be able to see. And we'll click through the different things there, like that. Uh, and now, what I just wanted to quickly show you as well is, if we go over to uh, our folder here, um, if we want to go and add a bit more data, I've got some more data here. So I'll just go and grab a load more uh, columns here, copy them across, paste them in there. Then we'll come back into here, uh, and if you see, we have not uh, not got uh, Essex Road, I think was one on there. Uh, so if we now just uh, simply click refresh on that, it's going to go and see, go and pull in all of those um, all of those new files. Now, if we scroll down. Should see there's a, a few more in there. That's now pulled in the extra data uh, that we had as well. And just to prove that, we could put a call out over here uh, and then add some more data like this. Go back over to here, paste it in, go back over here hit refresh and we should take it up it went up a little bit just show that one more time Pull in the last three. Okay. Let's refresh.
think you should see it pull all the rest through. There you go. So I hope that helps. Um, let me know if I can be more help.